good to go. Hello! This is the Cosmic Bible, God's Word for today and beyond. And I am Dr. Steve Kibler, your guide to the biblical text where truth lives. Today, we're going to continue to look at this, these dark forces that are revealed to us in the biblical text. We're going to uh, uh, look at what might be some obscure passages in your Bible. Uh, you may never have seen them before or heard them preached on before, but there they are, just the same. And because they're in God's Bible and they're the biblical text, we need to examine them. If we're going to develop a truly biblical worldview and understand what's going on in this world and why. We're going to be looking in the Old Testament book of 1 Samuel and we'll be in chapter 28 and we're going to read for you the first 19 verses of 1 Samuel chapter 28. Okay, so in those days the Philistines gathered their forces for war to fight against Israel. And Achish said to David, Understand that you and your men are to go out with me in the army. David said to him, Very well, you shall know what your servant can do. And uh, Achish said to David, Very well, I will make you my bodyguard for life. Now Samuel, the prophet Samuel, had died and all Israel had mourned for him and buried him in Ramah, his own city. And Saul, who was king at that time, had put the mediums and the necromancers out of the land. The Philistines assembled and came and encamped at Shunem. And Saul gathered all Israel and they encamped at Gilboa. When Saul saw the army of the Philistines, he was afraid, and his heart trembled greatly. And when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord did not answer him, neither by dreams, or by room, or by prophets. Then Saul said to his servants, Seek out for me a woman who is a medium, that I may go to her, and inquire of her. His servant said to him, Behold, there is a medium at Endor. So Saul disguised himself so he wouldn't look like king, right? And he put on other garments and went, he and two men with him. And they came to the woman by night. And he said, Divine for me by a spirit, and bring up for me whomever I shall name to you. The woman said to him, Surely you know what Saul has done, how he has cut off the mediums and the necromancers from this land. Then, uh, Why then are you laying a trap for my life to bring about my death? But Saul swore to her by the Lord, As the Lord lives, no punishment shall come upon you for this. Then the woman said, Whom shall I bring up for you? He said, Bring up Samuel for me. When the woman saw Samuel, she cried out with a loud voice. And the woman said to Saul, Why have you deceived me? You are Saul. The king said to her, Do not be afraid. What do you see? And the woman said to Saul, I see a God coming up out of the earth. He said to her, what is his appearance? And she said, an old man is coming up and he is wrapped in a robe. And Saul knew that it was Samuel. And he bowed with his face to the ground and paid homage. Then Samuel said to Saul, why have you disturbed me by bringing me up? Saul answered, I am in great distress, for the Philistines are warring against me, and God has turned away from me, and answers me no more, either by prophets or by dreams. Therefore, I have summoned you to tell me what I should do. And Samuel said, Why then do you ask me, since the Lord has turned from you and become your enemy? The Lord has done to you as he spoke by me. 
For the Lord has torn the kingdom out of your hand and given it to your neighbor, David, because you did not obey the voice of the Lord and did not carry out his fierce wrath against Amalek. Therefore, the Lord has done this thing to you today. Moreover, the Lord will give Israel also with you into the hand of the Philistines. And tomorrow you and your son shall be with me. The Lord will give the army of Israel also into the hand of the Philistines. Whoa. So Saul, King Saul, was in trouble. And he was afraid. The Philistines were coming to battle. And there were many and mighty men, and he was afraid. Now, it tells us, as we read, as, as we did read in verse 3, that Samuel had died. And all Israel had mourned him and buried him in Ramah, his own city. And Saul had put out the mediums and the necromancers, put them out of the land. So... I know some texts will say women with a familiar spirit. Some say mediums. And some say mediums and wizards, right? Has put the mediums and the wizards out of the land. And uh, those are all good translation, good good translations. And they're just different words saying the same thing. Mediums are oof, oof, oof. Uh, and that's one who has a familiar spirit. Right. Oh, uh, they have a familiar spirit. And wizard is a Yudonai, is a knower, or a necromancer. But they also have a familiar spirit. So we see here that what is called a medium is not something that's only recent, right? But it's something that is ancient. Mediums and necromancers have been around a long time. You know, I shared the following verses with uh, you in last week's, vid uh, last week's video. We were looking at my ghost story. And that's in Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 9 through 11. And it says, When you enter the land which the Lord your God has given you, you shall not... Uh, learn to imitate the detestable things of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or his daughter pass through the fire, which is reference to Molech, right? Or one who uses divination, a soothsayer, one who interprets omens, or a sorcerer, or one who casts spells, or a medium, or a spiritist, or one who consults the dead. These are real, and they are forbidden by the Lord for his people. So Saul does what he should not do. He contracts with an oaf, then a medium, a woman for Endor, from Endor. Now, this is not the forested moon from Star Wars where the Ewoks lived. <laughs> this is the real, the, the, the real Endor. And it was a, a town about 98 miles north of Jerusalem. And I'm, I'm smiling here because... My boxer puppy is uh, being kind of energetic here. Come here. And here she is. Here's Gretel. Say hello. Say hello. All right. Now get down. There you go. Stay down. There you go. She's full of energy. So indoor was a real indoor was a real place. It was a town. It was in, in the northern part of Israel. Like I said, about 98 miles north of Jerusalem. So. Uh, Saul asked this medium, this woman with a familiar spirit, to conjure up the deceased prophet Daniel. Now, come on, folks. Come on. This is King Saul, king of Israel, going to a spiritist, to a, a medium, to ask her to call up the dead prophet Samuel. That just sounds bizarre. You wouldn't think you would read about this in the Bible, but there it is. And it's there for a reason, because it's real. And we have to accept what's real. We have to accept what the biblical text says. Right? So now it's evident from the text that there are such things as medium. Right? They're there. 
But the ability to conjure up the dead is not the ability of the medium. Right? It's the ability of the familiar spirit. So it's not the power or the ability of a person who is a medium. It is the familiar spirit that is friendly with that person that has the ability. It's the spirit that has the ability. The term familiar spirits is reference to demons. In the New Testament, specifically, familiar spirits are referenced as demons. The term refers to demons that are close or familiar to a person. That should cause uh, caution, right? We often think that the medium is a person with the ability or a power, and it's not. It's the demonic presence that has the ability to speak with other spirits not the person. The person is being used. The person is being used. This is part of the deception of these dark practices. The medium is simply being used by the evil spirit, which causes further deception and further demonic activity. That's the goal. What is worthy of caution is according to the biblical text, the medium was able to call forth the deceased prophet Samuel, right? Or that familiar spirit was able to call forth the deceased prophet Samuel. The Old Testament biblical text teaches life after death. See, that's not a New, New Testament teaching. That's an Old Testament teaching. Old Testament biblical text teaches life after death and that everyone who departs from this life, right? And this is before the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus the Christ. Old Testament saints went to a place of conscious existence. That's where the prophet Samuel was. Um, there's a general term for this place. It's referred to as Sheol. Um, and it can be, uh, there are different terms that are used in the Old Testament text to call it the grave, the realm of the dead. Right? Uh, even Eretz, uh, under the earth. So the Old Testament saints, however, went to a place of comfort and rest called paradise when they died. And the wicked were there, but in a different kind of a part of it. It was all Sheol. So there were the righteous and the unrighteous. That both went to Sheol, but one was in what's called paradise. And uh, so Sheol was kind of the New Testament equivalent of Hades. Right, And uh, we read about that in the New Testament in Luke, where Hades' or shell was divided into two realms, a place of comfort where Lazarus was in Abraham's bosom, and then a place of torment where the rich man was, what we call hell. Um, it's also termed, you know, the, the place of comfort is also termed as paradise. And other places, this in the Greek, the place of torment is called Gehenna uh, in the Greek. And uh, between paradise and hell, two districts of Sheol, there was a great chasm that separated them. And the fact was that no one could cross that chasm. Uh, indicates that one after death, one's fate is sealed. There is no, after death, there is no changing one's mind. <laughs> you're either on the good side or you're on the bad side, right? It's just the way it is. So today, though, however, when an unbeliever dies, an unbeliever dies, it's still with that same Old Testament uh, format. Uh, they go to the tormented side of Hades uh, until the final judgment. And that's when Hades will be emptied before the great white throne. And... Uh, then the occupants will be judged, right? Prior to their entering the lake of fire. On the other hand, when a believer dies, he is in the presence of the Lord. Uh, and there he joins the Old Testament saints who have been enjoying their reward for, uh, you know, since the uh, 
death, burial, and resurrection and ascension of Christ. So at this point in the scripture, therefore the deceased prophet Samuel was called forth from Sheol, the place of the dead, in the paradise side. The biblical text here refers to several important things. Conscious existence after death, right? Conscious existence after death. The ability to cross the dimension that separates the living from the dead. And even in death, there is the retained knowledge of the Lord and his word and events on this earth. So fascinating. Something else interesting we read here is uh, the medium. When uh, Saul asked who she saw, she said, I see a God coming up out of the earth. I see a God. And uh, the word, the Hebrew word is Elohim. And we've spoken of Elohim before in previous videos and that's um, a term that's used often in the biblical text and it's a generic term used for a entity or a member of the unseen spiritual realm right. Elohim. the point is although there was an appearance of the prophet Samuel Right. It's evident that he was no longer part of the seen realm. Right? He didn't have the mass. He looked as a god, a spiritual being. And uh, he looked similar to what the Elohim looked like, or the small g gods. So this is really fascinating, uh, this piece of biblical text. It shows the reality of afterlife. Um, the use of terms that refer to these spiritual beings, the reality of the interaction of the spiritual and physical realm, right? And additionally, we read in uh, verse 15, and Samuel said to Saul, why have you disturbed me by bringing me up? <laughs> Saul said, I'm distressed for the Philistines are waging war against me and God has abandoned me and no longer answers me, either through prophets or in dreams. Therefore, I have called you, so that you may let me know what to do. Intelligent conversation, right? Isn't that really interesting? Intelligent conversation taking place between the living and the dead. We are told not to do this. If it wasn't possible for this to happen, then the Lord would not even mention it. But what we see here is an example of someone who blatantly disregarded the Lord's commands and contacted the dead by the use of a woman with a familiar spirit. It may cause us to wonder if this still happens today. Is it taking place today? Well, it seems so. In fact, it seems that it's becoming more and more frequent, more prevalent and more acceptable. There are many, many popular TV shows, documentaries, and reality shows uh, that are about the paranormal. You know, I was looking them up and he said, top 15 psychic and paranormal shows. I mean, that, there's a lot of them out there. And they're very popular. And uh, it seems that they're all making this phenomenon more acceptable, normal, and expected. It, even seems to me that the stage might be set for a worldwide paranormal extraterrestrial encounter. Now, I'll remind you that when we look at these spiritual beings, they are extraterrestrial. Right? Not Samuel, but the familiar spirits, the demons, the sons of God, the small g gods, right? Um, the Shadim. Uh, they're, they're extraterrestrials. That's that. They're not from or belong to this realm of Earth or its atmosphere. They're from outside. They're extra. They're, a, they're from beyond this terrestrial, right? This, this Earth. So there's a relationship between space alien extraterrestrial phenomena and 
demonic extraterrestrial phenomena. Direct correlation. And I think that the stage is being set on both sides, both from the alien UFO side and from this dark force side using uh, mediums and psychics contacting the dead and, and so forth. But what we need to remember is we've read this in 1 John chapter 4, verses 1 through 6. It says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God, and every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard is coming and now is already in the world. You are from God, little children. You have overcome them because greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. They are from the world. Therefore, they speak as from the world and the world listens to them. We are from God. The one who knows God listens to us. The one who is not from God does not listen to us. By this, we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of of error. Well, this has been the Cosmic Bible, God's Word for today and beyond. Know the truth, stand on the truth, speak the truth. God bless you.